God bless you, everyone. My name is Dave, and I want to tell you something about Halloween and the month of October. Um, the body of Christ can rest assured when we remain in the light of God that he has given us, as long as we know it is different from the darkness Satan resides in. You see, October is a month of Satan worship. Here in the state of Massachusetts, the Salem Art Gallery is the international headquarters for the Satanic Temple. The Satanic Temple of Salem, Massachusetts opened to the public on September 24th, 2018. Its most famous exhibit is an 8.5 foot tall bronze statue of the goat headed pagan god Baphomet. Christians around the world are safe under God's covering if only we remain under God's covering. And we know how to do that. We must be mindful of the deception and manipulation that comes from Satan. Our spiritual eyes and ears must be discerning. God's purpose in our lives protects us. We must follow direction and be within the light of God and out of the darkness of Satan. Our spiritual discerning eyes must be able to see the difference between the light of God and darkness of Satan. During this month of Satan worship, we must fight harder, but we can win as we always do. We are prepared under the will of God and sanctified for his mission, God's mission. Our purpose under the direction of God is consecrated. Nothing can stop us if we follow the light that God has provided. The truth, the truth God gives us is our guide to keep in the light of God and away from the darkness of Satan. I will read to you John chapter 17, verse 17 through 18. And the scripture says, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. And again, that's John 17, verse 17 through 18. You see, God will always sanctify you before he sends you on a purpose that he has designed for you. God will set your mission assigned by him to be holy by declaration and set it apart only for his kingdom. You see, God's will is legitimate and it's binding. I'll give you an example. God set aside the 12 disciples and made them holy by the truth the truth, which was his son, Jesus. In John chapter 14, verse six, I'm going to read to you John chapter 14, verse six. And the scripture says, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. As the disciples related to Jesus, the truth, which is in John chapter 14, verse six, the disciples were defined by that truth and we're prepared to be sent out to preach the gospel. See, Jesus worked on the disciples in four areas, one, two, three, four, in four areas to keep in the light of God and away from the darkness of Satan. Number one was ambitious behavior. Number two was lack of faith. Number three was Satan's influence. And number four was prideful behavior. I'll say that again. So Jesus worked on the disciples in four areas to keep in the light of God. Number one was working on the ambitious behavior. Number two, the lack of faith. Number three, Satan's influence. And number four, prideful behavior. Let's take a look at each one more closely. Number one, Jesus challenged their ambitions. And I'll read to you in Luke chapter 9, verse 46 through 48. An argument started among the disciples as to which of them would be the greatest. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, took a little child and had him stand behind, beside him. Then, he's, then he said to them, whoever welcomes this little child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. For it is the one who is least among you all who is the greatest. And that is in Luke chapter 9, verse 46 through 48. Number two, Jesus chastised 
their lack of faith. And this is in Matthew chapter 17, verse 19 through 20, and I'll read the scripture. Then the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, because you have so little faith. Truly, I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. And that's in Matthew chapter 17, verse 19 through 20. And number three, Jesus refuted Satan's influence. And that's in Matthew chapter 16, verse 23. Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. And that's in Matthew chapter 16, verse 23. And finally, number four, Jesus denounced their pride. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 33 through 35, I will read, and the scripture says, Peter replied, even if all you, I'll say again, Peter replied, even if all fall away on account of you, I will, I never will. Truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. And that's in Matthew chapter 26, verse 33 through 35. So again, in summary, Jesus worked on his disciples in four areas, and you can work on it yourself. Uh, number one, ambitious behavior. Number two, the lack of faith. Number three, Satan's influence. And number four, prideful behavior. You see, when Jesus had finished preparing the disciples, they were sent out in such power as intended by the will of God. They were formed, they were molded, they were prepared. You see, Satan will try to convince you that your sin renders you useless to God. That is a lie from the author and father of lies, that's Satan. As soon as you sin, Satan will whisper in your ear, you failure, you are no use of, uh, to God. This can bring in a deep sense of defeat and hopelessness. Yet there is no freedom that compares to a soul set free by God's grace. We can win. And we've talked about that. When God's people allow God's truth to realign them to God's will and God's standard, then the power of God will be released through them the same way it was released through the first disciples. The truth will set you free. The truth is, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And you see that in 1st of John, chapter 1, verse 9, and we are restored to the usefulness to God. Be prepared this month of October. I thank you. My name is Dave from the Resurrection Center.